Welcome to the Plant Metabolism and Productivity Tutorial. This tutorial will help you learn about the connections between photosynthesis and cellular respiration in plants, and will help you to estimate the productivity of the leaves you sampled in the Exploring Plant Metabolism Lab. As you watch the tutorial, you can stop it at any point to spend more time on a slide if you wish. Where does the energy come from that sustains all life on Earth? You guessed it, the sun. Well, most of it anyway. There are bacteria called chemosynthetic bacteria that live in perpetual darkness deep down in our oceans and in caves. These bacteria harvest energy from inorganic chemicals in their environment. The video you see here is of a deep sea volcanic vent, sometimes called a hydrothermal vent, and the organisms that live in these tall castle-like vent chimneys are chemosynthetic bacteria who get their energy from the chemicals being spewed from the vent. This tutorial will periodically pose thought questions for you to consider. Stop the tutorial and record your answers. Then, as you proceed through the rest of the tutorial, evaluate your answers and make note of and correct any misconceptions that you might have had. So what types of organisms utilize photosynthesis as a means of harvesting energy from their environment? And a variety of marine and freshwater single-celled, colonial, and multicellular algae. These bacteria often reside in environments that are too harsh for plants, such as the excessively hot, salty, or acidic environments found in geothermal springs like those in Yellowstone National Park. In plants, the majority of photosynthesis occurs in leaf mesophyll cells. These cells contain chloroplasts, which contain photosynthetic pigments such as chlorophyll. These amazing molecules are capable of harvesting the energy from visible light from the sun, which is later converted into chemical energy stored in the bonds of organic molecules. A common metabolic misconception is that plants harvest energy from the sun through photosynthesis, while animals harvest energy from food through cellular respiration. In fact, plants and other photosynthetic organisms utilize both photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Note in this sketch of a plant cell, both chloroplasts and mitochondria, the sites of cellular respiration, are present. The concept map that is about to be presented will summarize the connections between cellular respiration and photosynthesis within and between plant cells. As you review this map, make note of where the sun's energy is being used to facilitate the production of new plant tissues required for growth and reproduction. Also make note of where energy, in the form of ATP, is being used to meet the energy demands of each cell and is therefore not available for growing new cells and tissues. The green box here represents a plant leaf mesophyll cell. Note that it contains both chloroplasts and mitochondria.
Note that plants use carbon dioxide in photosynthesis. CO2 provides the carbon and oxygen necessary to build sugars. Note that a chemical byproduct of cellular respiration occurring in mitochondria is carbon dioxide, which is released to the atmosphere. Note that oxygen is a waste product of photosynthesis and it is also released into the atmosphere. Finally, note that some of the energy from the sugars produced in photosynthesis is used to produce ATP, which is then used to provide the energy to run cellular processes, that is, to do the work required to stay alive. So plants, just like animals, require energy and material resources to stay alive, grow, and reproduce. Unlike animals, plants get their energy directly from the sun in the form of light energy. This energy is then used to transform carbon dioxide and water into energy-rich carbohydrates and later through other metabolic pathways into other organic molecules essential for life. So whereas animals must eat organic molecules, what we usually call food, to provide the energy and material resources for life, plants create these organic molecules from sunlight and simple inorganic molecules such as carbon dioxide, water, and nutrients that they obtain from the soil. So in a sense, plants build or create their own food, whereas animals must go and find it in their environment by eating plants, or preying on other animals. Productivity is a measure of the amount of the sun's light energy captured by plants, which is then stored in the chemical bonds of the carbohydrates produced in photosynthesis. Recall that this energy, which is now chemical energy, is used for two main purposes. It is used to fuel cellular respiration, which provides the energy required to do the work required to stay alive. Secondly, the carbohydrates produced in photosynthesis are used to provide the energy and material resources required for growth of new tissues and reproduction. This is what's so amazing about plants. They use the sun's energy to literally construct themselves from thin air, along with some nutrients they obtain from the soil but the majority of the organic mass of a plant came from the carbon dioxide they obtained from our atmosphere. We can estimate productivity by measuring something that is taken up by a plant which is proportional to the energy uptake. What do you think this is? Stop this tutorial and take a moment to think about and record your answer. So the rate of uptake of carbon dioxide is directly proportional to the uptake of light energy from the sun. You should also recall that carbon dioxide is a byproduct of cellular respiration. So the rate of release of CO2 is directly proportional to how much energy is ultimately used by plants to run energy requiring cellular processes. Recall from last week's Exploring Plant Metabolism Lab that productivity comes in one of two flavors. The first is gross primary productivity, or GPP, which is the total amount of the sun's energy that a plant converts into chemical energy and which is stored in the bonds of the organic molecules created in photosynthesis. The second is net primary productivity, or NPP. This is the total amount of the sun's energy a plant converts into chemical energy, GPP, subtracting out the amount of chemical energy a plant uses to fuel cellular respiration.
Recall from the Exploring Plant Metabolism Lab that NPP could be estimated by measuring the rate of change in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the biochamber when the plant was exposed to light. This is an estimate of NPP because in the light, both photosynthesis and cellular respiration are occurring simultaneously, so the rate of change in the concentration of CO2 reflects both the rate of uptake of carbon dioxide through photosynthesis minus its release through cellular respiration. At the conclusion of the lab, you were asked to speculate on a method of estimating GPP. Although we cannot directly measure GPP, we can calculate it if we know how much cellular respiration is occurring, which we can measure directly by putting our leaves in the dark. Stop this tutorial and write down the method your team decided on during last week's lab to calculate GPP from the light and dark measures of the rates of CO2 uptake or release. The next few slides will help you to evaluate the method your team proposed and conceptually understand how to use the measures from the Exploring Plant Metabolism Lab to calculate GPP for the leaves you sampled. Okay, so let's say we put some plant leaves in a sealed bottle and expose it to 10 minutes of light and then 10 minutes of dark. During this time, we use a carbon dioxide sensor to measure the changes in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the bottle. These are the results that are obtained. The next three slides summarize the changes in carbon dioxide in the bottle with respect to the metabolic processes occurring in the plant during the light and dark phases of the experiment. As we calculate productivity, the sign of the slope, which is the rate of change in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the bottle, for each measurement is important because they tell us whether carbon dioxide is being taken up or released by the plant in your chamber. Remember that the plant is undergoing both photosynthesis and cellular respiration in the light. The plant is actually taking up more carbon dioxide than this through photosynthesis, but we can't actually see this in the light because carbon dioxide is also being released through cellular respiration at the same time, and we really don't know how much. As we discovered in last week's lab, we can determine how much cellular respiration is occurring by putting our leaves in the dark. So to determine gross primary productivity, or total photosynthetic rate, we must add the rate of respiratory release of carbon dioxide in the dark to the rate of uptake of carbon dioxide in the light, which if you recall is net primary productivity. But remember that NPP is a negative number because our CO2 sensors were measuring how much carbon dioxide was being sucked out of the biochamber by the leaves. So to add the dark respiratory measure to the light measure, we must add in the negative direction. This is done by subtracting the dark slope from the light slope 
as indicated in the figure above. Stop this tutorial and take a moment to record the measures of NPP and respiration, and then calculate GPP from these results. In this case, GPP is calculated to be a negative 20 parts per million per minute. So this plant is photosynthesizing as it is absorbing carbon dioxide from the bottle at a rate of 20 parts per million per minute. However, it is releasing carbon dioxide into the bottle at a rate of 30 parts per million per minute. This explains why the light measure, which is NPP, is a positive 10 parts per million. The plant's respiratory rate is exceeding its photosynthetic rate. This is like the person whose rent and living expenses are greater than their total pay. You can only keep up this lifestyle until you've depleted your cash reserves in the bank. Just like you can't continue to live if you are spending more than you are earning, this plant, which is using more energy just to stay alive than it is bringing in through photosynthesis, cannot continue to live this way over the long term. To stay alive in the short term, this plant will have to use energy stored in organic molecules like starch and plant fats, but once these energy reserves are depleted, Death will not be far off. Again, stop this tutorial and take a moment to think about the thought questions posed here. Record your answers in the Exploring Plant Metabolism Lab homework. Again, record your answer to this final question in the homework for the Exploring Plant Metabolism Lab.